Ever wondered how Snapchat filters pick up your face? Well, they do it using facial landmark detection. What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renat and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can build your very own facial landmark detection app. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So what is facial landmark detection? Well, it's an awesome technique that uses machine learning, deep learning and AI to detect different points around your face. Now you can see from the screenshot on the screen, this is actually a screenshot from the app that we're gonna build by the way, that we're able to detect different points around the surface of our face, around our mouth, around our nose and around our eyes to name a few. Now when you connect these together or triangulate them, you're actually able to build a 3D mesh of your face. This is the same technology that Snapchat uses in their filters. The cool thing about the model that we're gonna be using in this video is that it's actually able to detect 486 3D facial landmarks. This allows you to create a really detailed mesh of your face. So let's take a look as to what we're going to be going through in this video. So in this video, we're gonna be covering three key things. So the first thing that we're gonna do is install face mesh. So this is a pre-trained deep learning library released by the TensorFlow.js team that allows us to perform facial landmark recognition. The second thing that we're going to be doing is building a quick react app that actually allows us to use that model. And then last but not least, we're going to be able to detect your face in real time and perform facial landmark detection. Now, how does this work exactly? Well, we're actually gonna be using React webcam to access your computer's webcam to actually perform that landmark recognition. We'll then use that face mesh model from TensorFlow.js to perform that detection. And then last but not least, we're gonna be using the HTML canvas to actually render that to the screen. So you'll be able to see a face mesh exactly as you can see on my smiling face right there. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. So in order to build our facial landmark detector app, we're mainly gonna be working with React and TensorFlow.js. So React is a front-end JavaScript library that allows you to build a really cool apps really, really quickly. In order to work with React, we're going to be using the npx create react app command, and this is going to create all of the stuff that we need to get our app up and running. Later on, we're going to be working with TensorFlow.js and bringing in our stuff, but more on that later. So the first thing that we're going to do is open up a new terminal and then I'm going to navigate into a folder that I've already got set up on my desktop called face mesh. So all of our application assets are going to sit inside of a folder called face mesh and everything's going to be inside there. So first up, let's go into that folder. And then what we're going to do is use that npx create react app command that we saw here to go on ahead and start setting up our app. So what we've done is we've typed out npx create react app face mesh. So face mesh, that last command is going to basically name our app. So you can see that it's starting to create a folder called face mesh. So let's go on and let that run. Booyah, so that's now gone and finished running. And you can see that we've got a folder called face mesh and we've got all of our application assets stored within there. Now what we're going to go on and do is open up that particular folder inside of our favorite code editor. So I'm gonna be using VS Code, but feel free to use whatever you like. Okay, so you can see that we've now got our folder opened up inside of VS Code. Now, this is going to be our React app here. So everything or the core application assets that you've got within a React app are all gonna be inside of this source folder here. And we're mainly gonna be working inside of the file called app.js. Now there's a couple of steps that we're gonna to need to go through in order to set up our facial landmark detector. So I'm just gonna paste those in. And you can basically see here that the first two things that we need to do are install and import our dependencies. Then we're gonna set up our webcam, set up a bunch of references to that and load our model. And then we're gonna be drawing our facial landmark detection. But we'll go through those steps a little bit more as we get to them. The first thing that we need to do is go on ahead and install our dependencies. Now there's three key dependencies that we're going to need. So we need TensorFlow.js, we actually need our facial landmark machine learning model, and we also need React Webcam. So this is going to allow us to use the webcam on our computer somewhere up here to be able to detect our face mesh. Now TensorFlow.js has a whole bunch of pre-built models. So in this case, we're gonna be using this face landmark detection model here. And you can see that it allows us to predict 486 3D facial landmarks to infer the approximate surface geometry of a human face. Basically, it allows us to create a face mask. So let's go on ahead and install our dependencies. So I'll open up a new terminal here inside of VS Code and install those.
Okay, so we've got our three key dependencies there. So in order to install those within our React app, we're just going to be using npm install. And then we're passing through the three dependencies that we need. So the first one is at TensorFlow forward slash TensorFlow.js or TFJS. The second one is at TensorFlow models forward slash face mesh. And the last one is React Webcam. I should also call out that this entire code base is going to be available in a GitHub repo. So if you just check the description below, it'll all be available there. So in order to install our dependencies, we then just need to hit enter. Okay, so you can see that we've now installed our dependencies. So that's all done. Now, if we wanted to, we can start up our app and start playing around with it. So let's just quickly do that first. So in order to start our app, we just need to run the command npm run start. And so this is going to open up inside of a new browser and you can see it's opening up there. And this is just going to be the template React app to begin with. So you can see that's up and running successfully. So if we scroll back, we've now installed our dependency so we can mark that as done. The next thing that we're going to do is actually import those dependencies into our app. So let's do that. Okay, so those are our dependencies imported. So we've gone and done a few things there. So we've imported use ref from React. So this is going to allow us to have a reference to our canvas components as well as our webcam. And then we've also imported TensorFlow.js. So you can see we've written import star as TF from TensorFlow.js. We've also imported face mesh. So import star as face mesh from TensorFlow models slash face mesh. And then we've imported our React webcam. So we can minimize this now. And then what we're going to do is mark that step as done. Now, what we're going to do is set up our webcam and canvas. So there's a couple of steps to do this. So let's go on ahead and do that. All right, perfect. So we've now gone and imported our webcam or set up our webcam and we've also set up our canvas. So we've done, we can mark that as done first up. And the first thing that we've done is we've imported or we've set up two references. So the first reference is our webcam ref and the second reference is our canvas ref. So these just allow us to refer to the on-screen components. Let's minimize this again. And then we've gone and set up our webcam here. So this webcam component is coming from React webcam. And then we've set up our canvas. So within our webcam, we've passed through our reference and we've also set up some inline styling. Likewise for our canvas, we've passed through our canvas reference and we've set up some inline styling. Now, if you scroll over, you can see that we've got our React webcam all up and running. So that's all good. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is actually define references to those. Actually, we've gone and done that as well. Next thing that we wanna do is actually go on ahead and load face mesh. So let's start doing that. So we're gonna set up a function just over here. So within our app, and this is going to load face mesh into our app or the face mesh model and allow us to perform those detections from our webcam. Perfect, so that's our face mesh function there. And what we basically define is a function called run face mesh, and we've made it asynchronous. 
Then the first thing that we do is go on ahead and load face mesh. So this is coming from our TensorFlow.js model here. So we basically use the load method to bring that into our app. We're then also passing through the input resolution and the scale. So input resolution is basically how big of a photo that we're going to be grabbing from our webcam. So we're passing that through to our face mesh and we're also scaling that down a little bit so that it performs a little bit faster. So let's go on ahead and mark face mesh as done. And we can see that our app's still running. There's no errors there. So the next thing that we want to go and do is define our detect function. So this is basically going to be the function that runs when our app starts up and actually goes on ahead and detects our model. So, so far we've loaded up face mesh, but we actually need to go and run detection. So grab our webcam, detect, and then run those detections. So let's set up our detect function. All right, so the first thing that we've gone up and defined is this if statement here. Now this is basically checking, so let's just include some brackets so that it reformats. So this is basically checking that our webcam is up and running and we're receiving data. So basically we don't want to actually go and run detections unless our webcam is up and running and receiving data because otherwise we're going to get false detections. Now what we can go and do is actually write the rest of our detect function. So just a little bit more on that. So basically we're checking that our webcam is not undefined, we're checking that it's not null, and we're checking that we're receiving data in that line here. So within our detect function, we've got five key things that we need to do. So first up, we need to get our video properties and these are gonna be the properties from our webcam. The second thing that we need to do is set our video width. Third is set our canvas width. And then the last two things that we need to do are make detections, which we're going to log out to our console. And then we also need to get our canvas for drawing as well. So this is going to be where we actually go and draw our detections. So let's power through these and then we'll come back and take a look at what we've done. All right, so those are our video properties. So basically we've defined three variables. So video, video width, and video height. The first one gets our video from our webcam ref. So you can see that that's our webcam down there. The second parameter, so video width, this is our second variable. This is actually grabbing the width of our video from our webcam down here. Third one is grabbing the video height. Now what we want to do is force set our video width. So you have to do this in order for this to be set. And this is going to make it a whole lot easier when we go to run our detections. And we're going to do the same thing for our canvas and set it to the video width and video height of our actual video. All right, so let's take a quick look at that. So basically so far what we've done is we've checked we're receiving data, we're getting our video properties, we're then setting our video or our webcam width and height, we're setting our canvas width and height. The next thing that we need to do is make those detections. So let's go on ahead and do that. All right, so we've now gone and written our last piece of detection code or before our drawing. So basically this last bit is going to receive our networks or our neural network from TensorFlow and we're then going to run the estimate faces method. So this is going to allow us to detect all of our facial landmarks and to that we're going to be passing our video. So this is going to be from our webcam. Now what we need to do is actually go on ahead and call this detect function from our run face mesh model. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so we've gone and updated our run face mesh model and basically what we're doing is we're setting an interval and then running our detect function down here and to that we're passing our network and we're basically saying we're gonna be running it every 100 milliseconds. So basically what we've done overall is we're going to be calling our run face mesh model. So let's actually go and do that. And don't say that just yet, let's just quickly take a look at our code. So we're gonna be running our face mesh 
function. This is first up going to load our neural network from TensorFlow.js. So this is going to be our face mesh bit up here. Then we're going to be running our detect function every 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, it's gonna grab our webcam, try to detect our face, and then eventually we're gonna be drawing that mask as well. And then all the way down here, we're actually going on ahead and triggering our run face mesh function, which again is gonna start that process of actually running those detections. So let's go on ahead and save that and test it out. All right, so you can't see anything on the screen at the moment and you can see my green screen in the background. Sorry about that, we're gonna take it down later. If we actually check our console though, what we should be able to see is our detection. So if we inspect and go to our console, we can't see anything there. Huh, let's take a quick look back. Maybe it's something to do with uh, this. Oh, and then this should actually read ready state, not read state. So let's save that again, let it recompile. And ideally what we should get now is some detections. Perfect, so you can see that that's now running. So you can see all of these detections popping up here. Now, if we actually open this up, you can see that within our detection, we're actually getting quite a fair bit of information. So we're getting annotations, we're getting bounding boxes, we're getting whether or not there's a face in view, we're also getting a mesh and a scaled mesh. Now we're mainly gonna be working with this scaled mesh here and basically each one of these represents a point within our face. So specifically an X, Y and a Z point because it's actually a 3D detection whenever it goes and detects a facial landmark. Cool, so that's great and all, but right now we're only logging out to the console. So we're not actually drawing anything on our face, but what we really wanna do is be able to visualize all the landmarks that we've got within our face. So now let's take a look at our next couple of tasks. So we've now gone and written our detect function and it's working successfully. Now what we're going to go on ahead and do is start setting up our drawing utilities, our triangulation and our drawing. So in order to start setting that up, what we're first going to do is create a new file called utilities.js. And within here, we've got to do three things. So we need our triangulation metrics and we'll talk about that in a sec. We also need to draw a triangle and we also need to draw the points. All right, awesome, let's save that. Let's just make sure we've got our app.js file saved. So in terms of the first thing that we're going to do, so triangulation metrics. So a triangle is obviously three key points. When working with TensorFlow.js and specifically the face mesh model, we basically want to detect which of these three points over here. And we're now not getting anything. So let's hold on, let's just check that again. Which, uh, all right, so that we just needed to refresh. So which of these three points here, so whether or not it's zero, one, five, which of these three points actually form a triangle on your face? So when we import our triangulation metrics, that's gonna contain all of that information. So we can actually just bring that in. So again, all this code is gonna be in a GitHub repo, so you can just paste those triangulation metrics from my utilities file. So let's grab these triangulation metrics. You can see there's quite a bit, fair bit of information there, but basically what we're saying is point 127, 34 and 139. These three represent a triangle. Likewise, these three represent a triangle and these three represent a triangle. So we're actually gonna use these triangulation metrics to go on ahead and draw a triangle. But first up, what we're going to do is draw our points. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be passing our predictions as well as our canvas to our point drawing function. And this is going to allow us to draw points on our canvas to detect our actual face. So let's go on ahead and start coding up this function. So this function is going to be called draw mesh. And basically to that, we're going to be passing our predictions as well as our canvas. Now what we're going to do is actually loop through each one of these predictions and actually draw it on our canvas.
Perfect, so that's our point function done. Now eventually we're going to include our triangulation function in there as well. So we're actually going to call it from within our draw mesh method. But for now, let's actually go on and test this out. So we can take our draw mesh method and we can actually pass it through to our app.js file and actually go on ahead and draw our points initially. So where we need to embed this is right down here. So basically going to be calling it after we've actually made our detection. Oh, and we actually need to import that function as well. So right now we're using it, but we haven't actually imported it. So let's go and import that. Uh, that should draw mesh from utilities. Sorry, dot slash utilities. Perfect, cool. Let's go and check that out. All things holding equal and there you go so we're now drawing our face mesh so you can see that each one of these represents a key point so we can detect our eyes and our mouth pretty cool awesome right all right now if we take a step back let's take a quick look at what we actually wrote to draw this so basically what we're doing is we're grabbing our predictions and then for each of our predictions we're going through that scaled mesh key that we were taking a look at before then from that we're looping through and we're grabbing the x and y coordinate so we're ignoring the z because we're obviously just using a regular camera not a 3d camera so then we basically begin our path we then draw our arc which is actually our point so again more on this if you go and read the canvas api and then we set the color that we want to draw and then we actually fill it in so if we wanted to change this for example to pink we could so let's refresh it wait for it to detect you can see that we now got pink points rather than aqua points we're going to set it back to aqua because we're going to draw our lines as pink and again we can change it again sweet and you can see that's following our face if i close my eyes it's Pretty cool, right? So we're actually now building out our face mesh. Now, the last thing that we actually need to do is actually go and draw the triangle within our face. So right now it's only just detecting points, but we actually want our triangulation metrics as well. So let's go on ahead and do that. So in this case, we're first up going to draw our, or set up our path drawing method, and then we're actually going to call it within our draw mesh method. All right, so that's our draw path method done. Basically what this is doing is initiating a new path. We then specify our first point and then we go and draw our other points and then we close it. So that basically forms an entire triangle. We're then setting our stroke styles. In this case, our lines are gonna be pink and we're then passing through our entire region. Now what we're going to do is actually go on ahead and call our draw path method because right now we're not actually calling this, it's outside of our draw mesh method. So what we can actually do is go on ahead and loop through our different triangulations and actually go on ahead and draw these triangles. So let's go and do it. And that's that done. So basically what we're doing here is we're then calling our draw path method. So what we've defined up here. But first up, what we're doing is we're actually passing through our different triangulation metrics. So we divide it by three because we basically want to chunk them together and get three different points. And that's what's happening here. So we're getting a triangulation length, 
we're dividing them by three and then we're getting groups of three points and mapping it through to our specific point. Then what we're doing is we're actually going on ahead and calling our draw path method, which again requires our canvas, our points, and whether or not we wanna close our path, which basically formulates our entire triangle. So now if we go on ahead and we haven't defined key points, let's take a quick look at our error there. Oh, and this should actually be inside of here. This is our draw points method. Let's try that again. And there you go. We're now drawing our entire face mesh. So you can see our aqua points are the actual dots and our pink lines have represented there. Now, if you wanted to change the color of the lines, you can just change this parameter here. So say, for example, you wanted it as gray, you can do that and that's going to change it from pink to gray. So let's move that away. And there you go. So we're now getting an entire face mesh. I think the pink looks better. Let's set it back. So if we actually step away, this is actually pretty accurate. So it should be able to detect us from quite a way back as well. So again, you can see it's still detecting our face and it's following us all the way. So if we go off screen and then come back, that's working as well. And that's how to build a facial landmark detector. Pretty cool, right? And again, you can see that all of our detections are happening down here. So if we go and take a look at all the stuff that we've done, now if we step back into our app.js file, we've gone and set up our drawing utilities, we've gone and defined our triangulations, and again, big thanks to the TensorFlow.js team, so they had all of that triangulation code, as well as some of the drawing utilities within their GitHub repo. Again, I'll link to them in the description below. We've set up our triangle path drawing method, as well as our point drawing method, and we've added it to our detect function. So all up, we're now done, and you can reap the rewards of your awesome facial landmark detector model. And basically, you've got the beginnings of your own Snapchat filter app. So again, detecting our face, and you can see it moving pretty cool. So as we're like moving around, it's following us. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found today's video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know what you're using facial landmark recognition for. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.